his, um, his ancestry, ancestry connection with Wurno. In 1990, uh, when Babengida suggested that uh, political class we should set up political associations uh, towards forming political, uh, towards registration of political parties. Uh, the late Major General Adua set up and his uh, associates set up People's Front. Now, some of us here in Sokoto were enticed into it. I mean, we are in those days, in, at the time, a lot of people were uh, clamoring for uh, democracy. And so we thought maybe we could chip in and do a bit to realize that. So I actually got into people's front through the Prodin of the late Sir Kinyak El Hajabakar Koko, who had been my mentor then. And uh, I was met the pro tem secretary of the party or of the political association here in Sokoto. So one day we were invited to a sensitization meeting in uh, Kaduna. Our invitation to the meeting came late. In fact, it came at night, and the meeting was going to start in the morning. So I left on the very day the meeting was holding, it was Kaduna, and I got there in the afternoon. So I went straight into the meeting and, uh, at Hamdala Hotel, and uh, the meeting went on up to about 10 o'clock at night. Due to the fact that I had no accommodation at Hamdala, where all the other invitees were uh, accommodated. I confronted Baba Gana Kingebe, Ambassador Baba Gana Kingebe, as Baba Gana Kingebe was then the coordinator of People's Front. So I accosted him and I said, look, I came late, so I don't have an accommodation. So he said, no problem, follow me. Let's go to the guest house. We'll find a room for her there. So that was the privilege I had, which led to, uh, which led to that, uh, which led to my access to that knowledge. Abdul Kader, uh, hooked up with some, somebody from Adamawa. I don't know where. Probably the man came here, or I don't know where they met. They hook, got hooked up, and uh, after some time, the man persuaded Abdul Qadir to escort him to Adamawa. And they left together. And uh, it happened that, according to the story I had, after he left for Adamawa, he came back to see his uh, roots once or twice. After then, no more contact. That legendary exodus would later open a new chapter, not only for Malam Abdul Kadri and his family, but also the people of his newfound home in Jada. While pursuing his business in the new community, Malam Abdul Kadri came across other migrants who had also settled in Jada. 80 year old Bala Mohammed Barungu, a resident of Jada whose parents migrated to the area from Kano, said Malam Abdul Kadri was married to Yapatu, who was a sister to his grandmother. That union resulted in the birth of a boy named Garba Abdul Kadir Abubakar. Garba was said to have been born somewhere here in Jada. 
the young Garba grew up into a strong man and a devout Muslim. As a teen, Malang Garba was said to have developed a deeper interest in the study of the religion of Allah and his prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and later became one of the prominent Islamic scholars in Japan.